How's it going everyone? I'm back with another Blender tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a realistic ocean scene using Blender's default render and a ocean modifier. To get the modifier, follow the first link in the description. It's a video showing you how to download and install the ocean modifier, cycles render, and some other things. If you haven't seen that already, Go and do that now. If you'd like, after you've done that, you can download this blend, which will be the second link in the description. If you don't want to follow this tutorial, or if you mess up somewhere along the way, you always have that option to go and do that. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to show you what the result looks like, and here it is. As you could see, that was quite a nice effect. Now let's get started. First of all, I'm going to go and open up a new blend file and then delete the default cube and add a plane. Once you've added that plane, go to your modifiers tab, which is the wrench and add an ocean modifier. And it should look something like this. Obviously it's going to be different because this is already a little bit fine tuned. Uh, once you've got your default set up, you can either choose between two options. One is generate. It generates this plane, or you can use displace. It displaces the vertices. But I'm going to go with generate, and most of you probably will too. Now there's a few options. Repeat X and Y. This is like array. It repeats the same mesh. They are seamless, so you can't see where one ends and one begins. If you have too small of a spatial size, and you repeat it too many times, you may be able to see the pattern repeating over and over. So I suggest using a bigger spatial size to make it look a little bit better. To animate this, it's really simple. All you have to do is go to the first frame you want animated, hover your mouse over the time, and hit the I key. Go to the last frame you want to be animated, move your time along, keyframe it again by moving your mouse over and pressing I and then it will animate the frames in between automatically. Spatial size and resolution kind of go together. If you have a really small spatial size and something like 10 resolution, it's going to be a lot crisper. The waves are going to look better. If you've got something like this with 60 spatial size, you need something like 32 resolution for it to look good. I rendered that at, I believe, 30 resolution, so that's probably where you should be. For this preview, I'm just going to have it at 9 resolution. I'll just show you what something like 16 resolution looks like. As you can see, it's much better. There's a lot more detail, um, but I'll just set that back to 8 so I don't get any lag. Choppiness is it's how choppy the waves are. Depth, you don't really have to concern yourself with that. It doesn't seem to be affected all the time. I've only got it to work once, and even then, it didn't really do anything. Scale, that's... Oh, whoa, never set your scale too high, clearly. That's basically the height of the waves, and I think it affects the choppiness and things like that, but I went with 2.5. Smallest wave size. If you want it to look really calm, set this higher, but if you want it to have a lot of detail, set it to really low. I suggest not using zero, though. Wind velocity. That's another thing like depth that really doesn't affect it too much. I just set mine to 50. You can leave it at default, though. The alignment. If you want the ocean to be going a certain direction, just set the magnitude of the alignment and the direction. I wanted it to be like an open ocean, so it didn't really look like it had a particular direction. There's also a great feature they have, which is generating normals and displacement maps. You can check this button and choose starting and ending frames and a path to render them to. Click Bake Ocean, and it will generate a series of normal maps. Now, also something that adds some realism is foam. I do have some slight foam, you can't see it in here. You can only see it during the renders, unless you have your texture settings set up differently. If you want foam, I suggest a really low coverage, like 0 0.01. If you have 0 0.01, you still see a lot of foam. Now to set up foam, just add a material to it if there's not already one, and go into your texture tab. There should be a texture. If there's not, add one. There should be this ocean thing. Set it to foam, and modifier object. My colors are set up different than default. I've got 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 1. Default is all 1s. On this, I wanted almost no foam, so I set mine up like this. If you adjust these, this is the foam. 
this is how it's going to wrap around your object. Um, for mapping it to the object, make sure you set it to UV for it to appear correctly. You can change the intensity of it by adjusting the color. I put mine to 0.125. As for the material settings, my diffuse color is, here's the hexadecimal color. It's 006181, which is kind of a blue green. Uh, no mirror, no transparency. If you want real-time reflections, you need to select mirror and create a sky box or a sky dome. If you don't know how to do that, I've got a tutorial. I'll put an annotation on the screen or you can look through my videos, but I chose to go with a different method, which I'll be showing soon. A specular. I set the intensity to zero because I didn't like the look of the specularity. I did give it subsurface scattering. It kind of changed the color and made it look better. It does turn the render time like two or three times normal. I think it was worth it. If you could get around subsurface scattering by just adjusting the colors, you can save a lot of render time. And that's about it for these options. Now for the fog, I just gave the horizon and zenith color different colors than normal. It's 7A8990 and B0C0D1. For the mist, I set it to zero, starting at 7.5, depth of 10, and height of zero. And that's about it. The render settings, you can just kind of put whatever you want. If you want it in 1080p, go for it. There's just one more thing. For your texture settings, if you want reflections, take a picture of clouds and go into your texture settings, select image or movie, go to image, select a cloud image. I got an image here. It's not going to be included with a blend file because it's a royalty free image from Turbo Squid. And although I can use it commercially, I cannot actually include the image in the download. You can go and just take a picture of the clouds or go find one online for free. You just go into mapping, change it to reflection, change the projection to sphere. Well, that's really all there is to it. You can render this out and it'll look good. Well, it'll look exactly like it does here. That's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next tutorial.